Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and today I want to talk to you guys about Joker. And Joker stars Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck and details his transformation into the most popular villain in pop culture. However, this is not your typical comic book movie, nor is it your typical origin story. Joker is a dark journey into the collapse of a mentally ill man living on the outskirts of a society teetering on the brink of economic and political upheaval, and the birth of a figure who symbolizes the collective anger and dark desire to act out against the established order of those disenfranchised by the wealthy elite. From nobody to anti-hero, from victim to celebrated villain, is Joker's journey. The world writer director Todd Phillips creates in Joker is grounded in a reality never captured in a film based on this kind of source material before. The film is dark, brooding, violent, unsettling, sad, and at times rather moving. Phoenix delivers a masterful, Oscar-caliber performance. You feel for him because he's a sad loner, and because the system has failed him more than once. The journey the film takes us on doesn't only consist of Arthur Fleck's descent into madness, but chronicles the how and why. And yes, yes, I know we should never truly know the backstory of the Joker, but the movie provides us a look into the character's background without being heavy-handed about it, or attempting to ascribe excuses for his bad behavior. He is merely the product of his environment. You feel for Fleck at times, as you would anyone who's down on their luck, but the film never lets us forget that while we're sympathizing with him, there's something dark boiling up just underneath the surface. The cinematography, the production design, the sets, the music, and the wardrobe are all top-notch. The filmmaking prowess on display in Joker is astounding. I've seen so many movies lately shot in front of green screens and computer-generated to the point that I no longer feel like I'm watching an actual movie, but that I'm watching someone playing a video game, that a film shot on real locations and sets with actual production design felt like a much-needed reprieve. Each frame seems meticulously crafted, and every sequence is executed masterfully. There are so many great moments in this film, ranging from comical and romantic to sad and disturbing. One sequence in particular, in which Fleck daydreams about a kind of happiness, warmth, and acceptance he'll never know, made my heart sink. Another sequence, an expertly crafted reveal depicting how deep Fleck's psychosis has grown, while also sad, sent a chill down my spine. The supporting performances from Robert De Niro, Zazie Beetz, and Francis Conroy are all fantastic, but this is the Joker's movie, and I cannot stress just how good Phoenix is. Thinking back over all the brilliant performers who've donned the grease paint in the past, Phoenix definitely had some big clown shoes to fill. He manages to make the character his own, and you simply can't take your eyes off of him. Phoenix's performance is chilling, moving, and completely mesmerizing. This is a great, great movie that completely lives up to the hype. Phillips and Phoenix bring a depth to Joker that made me completely forget about the character's comic book origin. And make no mistake, this is not a comic book movie. Joker is a gripping and unsettling character study, and it's a film that deserves to be seen and seen again. I cannot recommend Joker any higher. This is easily the best film I've seen all year. And now after having seen Joker, I can tell you that all the controversy trumped up by the media regarding the film's violence or its potential to inspire violence in others is completely ridiculous. Joker is no more violent than any other R-rated movie out there, and doesn't even register a blip on the violence meter when compared to a movie like John Wick 3. And not once does the film ask the audience to side with Joker. If anything, the film explores why a person like Joker exists. Mental illness is not gender or race specific, and mental illness gone untreated or mistreated can have dire consequences. So why target Joker? Regardless, the outrage mob are crying into their soy lattes right about now, as Joker's opening weekend totals rocketed just north of $96 million in the U.S. and nearly $250 million globally. If you've seen Joker, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching, or in this case, listening. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Join the A Buck A Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Kevin Smythe, B-Movie Mike, Robert Sobel, Turi Delamore, Stephen Flanagan, Lori Holt, Craig Farrand, Farron Sutton, Jeremiah Lambert, Grindhouse Grotto, Derek Janna, Demon Waffles, Simon Clark, Stone Gassman, Zachary Barton, Lauren Dixon, James Welch, Eli Geisler, Jeff Overing, Pete Toll, Kyle McGuire, Jay the Stingray, Andrew McDonald, Dave Barnes, Jonathan Lundy, Chris Gonzalez, Trenton Bowser, Jason Breitenbach, Brandon Bizdick, Steak Sauce, OG Myers, Mark Striano, Jeff Gardner, Travis Davis, The Obsolescionist, Chris Earls, and Kevin Fitzpatrick.
Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.